In the northern end of Africa's Great Rift Valley lies an area unlike anywhere on Earth. This is the Danakil Desert in Ethiopia, perhaps the most inhospitable place known to man. Volcanoes and earthquakes continually rip the ground apart, spewing lava and noxious gases. And this is officially the hottest place on the surface of the planet. The idea that anyone would actually live here seems absurd. And yet there are people living here, as they have for thousands of years. A legendary nomadic warrior tribe called the Afar. I'm setting off with a team of scientists on an incredible journey. We hope to discover how people survive in this most extreme environment. How their lives and even their bodies have been shaped by the land around them. Look at you, you make it look completely effortless. You need to be on good form in this environment just to carry on. If you're off, you will die. Nice and simple. We want to get to understand a community where survival depends on working together. I love this place. You just feel part of the family already. <laughs> they called me sister today. We also want to delve beneath the surface of this extraordinary land to unlock its secrets. It's a journey that will take us into the fabric of the Earth, broken apart by earthquakes. Oh, oh, oh. You are God. kidding me. Google. To think this happened overnight, this is the stuff of Hollywood. And we'll go further still into the raging furnace of volcanoes that are still shaping this land. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> no wonder the Afar call this place the gateway to hell. We start our adventure in the Ethiopian highland town of Mekele. So what do you need to mount an expedition to what is reputedly the most inhospitable place on Earth? Well, our team consists of 25 scientists, adventurers and specialist camera teams. We're supported by over 50 Ethiopian drivers, fixers and guides. And we've got, as you can see, about 2,000 kilograms of kit. From here, we drive about 120 kilometers to the edge of an area called the Danakil Depression. From there, we have to go on foot with camels to a small place called Dalol, but it's famous for being the hottest place on Earth. Right, I think I'm ready. To get to the Danakil Depression, we must first journey through the Ethiopian highlands. Our last contact with civilization, cooler temperatures and greenery for the next three weeks. Ahead of us lies an adventure that will take us to the world's oldest salt mines, then onto a village in the very heart of the hottest place on Earth. We're also aiming to be the first to conquer the world's newest earthquake fissure, as well as its oldest active lava lake. But we're not just sightseeing. This is an in-depth exploration of this extraordinary land and its amazing people. What I want to do is find out what it is that make the Afar such great survivors in an area where most people would just perish. The Afar can only live in this hostile environment because of their livestock. So what animals do they keep? How do they keep them? And while I'm here, is there anything I can do to help? 
Meanwhile, Earth scientist Dougal will be looking for evidence to support his theory that the land the Afar live on is in the process of disintegrating. And the only way to do that is to get down and dirty in the rumbling bowels of the Earth. This part of Africa is literally tearing itself apart. We've got steaming fissures, active volcanoes, and bubbling lava lakes. I want to go face to face with those volcanoes using the latest 3D technology. After eight hours of bumpy roads, we've finally reached the bottom of the highlands and our first overnight camp. What a journey. What a journey. Well, I think we can probably say we're officially in the middle of nowhere. Um, it was a, it's a, it's a long old haul. So, yeah, we've, we've, we've earned our water and hopefully some dinner. <laughs> it's too hot for tents, so we'll sleep under the stars. It does mean we'll have to look out for unwelcome visitors. But luckily, we have Steve on guard duty. We're just having a quick scan around for um, scorpions. They, uh, there's a peculiar thing about them is that, is that they fluoresce under UV light. So we've got a UV light source here. Oh, here we go. There we go. Oh, yes. See how it shines? Absolutely yes. apple green. There's no mistaking that. The thing with scorpions is, is that you'll be stung before you know it's there. There are around 17 species of scorpion in this part of the world. The dry, rocky conditions make an ideal habitat. Yeah, just, uh, sorry guys, um, we have right? found some scorpions just outside camp, so just letting everybody be aware that they are knocking about. They're not gonna, it's not going to kill you, it's just going to hurt like fury, so no okay. sandals, if you would. We settle in for the night, and it's really starting to feel like the expedition is underway. We're here now, and actually, sleeping under the stars, that's a bargain. You've got to love that, haven't you? Big, full old moon. Um, yeah, very happy now. Tomorrow's the start, really, of our first big physical test here in this very remote and extremely hot part of Ethiopia. I think it gets hotter as the journey goes on. We're being, we're kind of being let down gently into the heat, but it's going to be a tough day, I suspect, but a good one. We wake to a scene that has remained almost unchanged for 2,000 years. This is the starting point for great caravans of camels on their way to the Dalol salt mines in the heart of the Danakil Desert, where our scientists' mission will begin in earnest. Though first, we have to get there. It is accessible the long way round in a 4x4, but we want to experience that journey as the locals do it, with a camel train. Well, from now, these vehicles aren't going to be any good to us, because the route we're taking can only be done on foot and by camel. So these camels are all loaded up with everything that we need for the next three days. For Steve, this is an opportunity to study the camel in action. He's picked one out, and for some reason known only to him, he's called it Jeff. All right, Jeff, it's going to be fine. And what Jeff doesn't know is that he and his mates are the key to the Afar's survival. 